Hey everybody, this is Jeff Kelly. I'm here with Bharat and Bob. We're gonna talk a little bit about Greenplum and text analytics. Before we do that, guys, why don't you introduce yourselves, Bob? Sure, I'm Bob Glithrow. I'm Principal Product Marketing Manager here at Pivotal. And I work in our data product marketing team focusing mostly on analytic type use cases and uh, things like that. Cool. Hey, uh, my name is Bharat Sitarman. I'm a product manager for Greenplum Database. I focus on the machine learning and analytics, in particular, natural language processing and text analytics. Great. Well, thanks guys for joining me. So why don't we start with the very basics? Why should people be concerned with all the text-based uh, documents and other content they have uh, inside their enterprise, outside their enterprise? Why is it important to think about your text data? Yeah, uh, that's a great question. You know, according to some independent research firms, about 80 to 90% of the world's data is actually in unstructured format, uh, largely text. So this includes, but isn't limited to what you see in chat records, uh, texts, emails, social media, logs, uh, PDF, raw documents, et cetera, and so much more. Uh, so we have all this information at our fingertips, and yet we're actually hardly tapping into the tremendous value and information that it provides. And if we were able to do that, we would gain so much more insight into uh, what this text offers. Yeah, definitely. Companies have a wealth of information buried in their transactional systems about customer you know, purchase behavior, product selections, things like that, transactional histories. But if you can enrich that data with other sources of information, things like you know where they are, who they're related to, what they're saying on social media about a particular product or service, you can begin to address much more complex use cases than the typical BI-focused or historical reporting uh, use cases that are uh, typical data warehouses. So why isn't everybody doing this already? What are, what are some of the challenges that might be holding people back? That's a good question. Uh, you know, it's easy as a human to read these bodies of text and extract meanings. Uh, you can see entities, you can see relationships, uh, other insights. But if we were to try and process this at a large scale manually, it'd be extremely cumbersome. And because the data is in such a free-flowing format, it's really difficult for algorithms to process at a scale. Uh, there's so many subtle nuances to the English language alone. I mean, imagine English, but trying to incorporate all the other major languages in the world. So for example, a recommendation for a product, if someone had mentioned an idiom such as a product is the bee's knees, that would generally mean good sentiment and indicate that you know, a person was a, had a favorable, favorable review of a product. However, a machine would just think that's about an animal body part without actual proper context clues. So this, amongst many other things, it's really difficult for a machine to actually analyze these you know, subtle nuances that you see in different languages. All right. Traditional database technologies also tend to be not very well suited to handle things like text. So relational databases, for example, structure data into fixed length records, but there's really no good general way to partition text into atomic records. And so you're kind of left with an idea of like, well, what's the best way to kind of store, excuse me, extract, store, and search all of this data? And so, you know, specialist databases and document stores have evolved to meet this challenge. Okay, so let's dig into some of those techniques then to actually, as you said, extract, store, analyze all that data, make sense of it. What are some of the approaches that either these, uh, these databases that are purpose-built for this are doing and, and maybe some of the other more general purpose databases are starting to add these capabilities? What are we talking about? Yeah, uh, the field is still fairly new. I mean, it's only about... Uh, made some progress in the last eight or nine years or so, but there's been a lot of great progress. Uh, so we have some supervised learning approaches using different search libraries such as Solar, as well as modeling libraries that you might see using Open NLP or Python data science packages that you might use, uh, call it like NLTK. Uh, so these are able to capture entities such as names, places, organizations, uh, classify parts of speech uh, for context, finding relationships and clusters of related text, or even doing some basic sentiment analysis. So there, you know, it's still fairly new, but it's, you know, there's still a lot more that we need to do to understand these human speech patterns, but the field has gone pretty fast every single day. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's dig into the Greenplum approach. So part of Greenplum is something called GP text. Tell us a little bit about that. 
Yeah, so GPTEX currently, it's an extension of Apache Solar uh, that's designed to run at scale on the Greenplum platform. So we get the flexibility and configurability of Apache Solar, and this includes uh, analyzer chains to process different languages of text, uh, different types of text, whether it's you know cluster logs, whether it's um, social media content, or even some international text. Um, as well as the scalable architecture and the familiar SQL interface that GPDB provides. So we leverage the best of both worlds. Um, when you see a lot of uh, other you know, competitive uh, search libraries, they're running on these standalone platforms and you would have to integrate them with your database, uh, with your data, but it would be sitting externally. Uh, using GP text, you're able to integrate this directly into the Greenplum platform. And we have uh, text, we have geospatial, we have machine learning all at scale in one stop shop, basically. So dig into that a little bit more. The benefits of that are, are what? The fact that you only have one database to administer, uh, but also that you can perhaps do different types of analytics on the same data, combine analytic approaches. What are some of those real benefits from having it in a single database? Yeah, uh, so when we look at different packages and trying to maintain uh, different software just to process one set of data, uh, whether it's for geospatial, whether it's for text, you would have to use different libraries, you would have to train different uh, groups of people. Uh, using the GP text platform and using the you know, general GP analytics that we provide in Green. Uh, you're able to essentially use it as a one-stop shop. You're able to train on one language, uh, one common language, which would be SQL. Um, you know, they would also have the flexibility to use other languages, such as R and Python, but it would all be running in one platform. And by using this, it improves the performance because everything's running locally, and it improves the capabilities and the use cases that customers would be able to uh, do on these systems. Mm. Great. So let's get into some real use cases. I'd love to hear how Greenplum customers are actually leveraging GP Text today. What are some some of those use cases that you've seen, you know, in your time working with customers? What are some of the ones that stand out that could really bring this to life for people listening and watching right now? Definitely. Uh, so one of our major use cases is actually directly around Wall Street and the financial firms, uh, especially after two thousand eight. There's been a lot of crackdowns in terms of regulatory and financial compliance and ensuring that uh, you know, the trades and the activity that's going on is uh, legal and kosher. Uh, so this includes you know, trying to do risk management. So there's a constant stream of these incoming documents coming in PDF, Word documents, uh, chat records, uh, other you know, forms of data. Uh, and you need to evaluate that against the trade activity in history. And so by doing this, uh, major firms uh, such as Morgan Stanley and JPMC are able to reduce the risk of fraudulent activity as well as make sure, ensure that they're compliant with government regulations. Um, so another thing that they have is actually around customer management. So these customer service calls that are coming in are text-to-speech or OCR, they're images that are coming in. And we can parse that and auto-categorize these to the appropriate department. So if you have a customer calling into the complaints department about uh, you know, their credit card not working or something like that, uh, you're able to actually you know, zip that right to the you know, direct department rather than having to fumble around and manually figure out where they need to go or having them try to figure out on their own how to navigate you know, complicated phone lines. So these automated processes are much more time and cost efficient, reduce the manual labor that's necessary. Um, some other stuff that we have is around operation and parts monitoring. So we have a large semiconductor manufacturer and they need to monitor hundreds of different models and parts that are coming across each of these uh, manufacturing lines. And in order to reduce the risk of recall or defects that might occur, uh, what they do is keep copious notes in terms of the structure data, such as the temperature, the pressure, uh, other environmental variables going on in each of these uh, production lines, as well as operator notes, you know, uh, detailing the process that was taken to manufacture each chip. And in case they run into some issues with one particular manufacturing plant, they can actually take that data and correlate it with all the other different manufacturing plants to see what other plants might have had similar uh, environmental variables or similar uh, effects and minimize the recall or you know risk of defects for these chips. Right, just kind of keeping on that same theme of customer experience. You know, one thing that a lot of companies have, if they've been in the business for a while, is they have enormous databases 
of trouble ticket information or customer service records where you know um, an analyst had to help a customer resolve a problem and record their notes in the database. Well, there's you know a wealth of information that can be correlated with error codes from devices, for example, or network conditions. You can think of a communication service processor, right? Uh, you know, diagnosing uh, service troubles. And so being able to correlate kind of network conditions and equipment conditions and failure codes with resolutions gives you a way to kind of make rec proactive recommendations to customer service agents who are on the line that can be ranked in according to relevance. You know, one other thing that we've seen done going back to the financial services scene is kind of the stream using information and documents to kind of streamline uh, different types of processes like a sales processes. So for example, one uh, customer we worked with uh, was a retirement plan administrator. They had a lot of uh, information trapped in about document features, plan features and benefits and, and obligations all locked up in PDFs. And so as their sales reps are writing kind of these customized plans, they did an analysis to kind of understand, okay, what are sort of the common terms that are, you know, across all these different plans so that we can kind of package these in most popular features into collections for a particular type of plan that can be streamlined much more efficiently. So instead of having a sales force, you know, doing custom deals left and right, maybe you've got five or seven different plans you can offer that are canned that capture most of the features that are being customized. So this creates, you know, a much more streamlined process for sales, much more standardization than deals, you know, much fewer odd, oddball terms uh, that you have to worry about affecting things for like revenue recognition or contractual obligations. So there's all different kinds of ways customers can kind of get around uh, their arms around what's going on inside, you know, their, their documents and their text information. And, uh, you know, just to piggyback off uh, what Bob was mentioning, you know, the, versatility of where text data is useful. Uh, when we're talking about financial, we're talking about retail when it comes to customer, you know, chat transcripts as well as recommendations for or reviews that customers might have. Uh, you have these operations, manufacturing, as I mentioned, and even healthcare. Uh, when we look at electronic mm -hmm. medical records, uh, these EMRs contain a wealth of information, not just from the structured data that you see with the patients, such as age, height, weight, ethnicity, etc., um, but also the doctor's notes. And trying to use these and evaluate these and correlate that, um, you can evaluate the risk of readmittance for particular patients uh, based off of the symptoms that they might be exhibiting or the history that they have. Uh, as well as for insurance companies trying to understand the risk of uh, insurance, who might be the high risk patients, who might be the low risk patients. Uh, these, you know, the medical diagnostics are, can be really improve essentially patient long term care, as well as reduce overall costs, healthcare costs. Um, and as you can see, these are affecting multiple different multi billion dollar industries. So it's extremely versatile, but largely untapped. Yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm actually thinking now back to Greenform Summit where I spoke with a customer uh, in the legal field who builds a platform to actually help their customers do things like e-discovery. So instead of, you know, an army of lawyers uh, manually going through documents to determine what documents are relevant to a particular case, they're using uh, Greenplum to analyze that text and figure out, hey, here are the things that are important. And they're even looking to do some uh, almost predictive analytics, you might say, trying to help customers in their case, large enterprises, figure out where they may have some regulatory issues based on analyzing text and emails and other forms of communication to get ahead of their challenges. So uh, just another example of another industry uh, where this could really, uh, really help out. So in terms of the practitioner, we think of data scientists and analysts as Greenplum users. Uh, do they need particular skills in addition to uh, what they already practice in terms of data science in order to use GP text and actually perform some of this text analytics? Are there, is there a subspecialty, for example, in text analytics that they need to be uh, familiar with? Uh, not much more than, uh, you know, the regular data science practices. In terms of the text analytics and the solar specifics, um, we actually uh, managed to translate that a lot into the familiar interfaces that they might be used to, in particular uh, SQL. And, uh, you know, using this uh, interface, we provided a familiar interface that they're able to basically utilize the, the solar capabilities. Um, one of the nuances that they might need to learn is essentially solar syntax, uh, but that's very largely similar to what you would see in general uh, text search syntax, whether it's Google uh, searching at a Google search bar 
or you know using a regular search functionality that you might see in many of these different applications uh, it's fairly similar to all, a lot of that great and in terms of getting started uh, do you have any uh, recommendations for folks thinking about this in terms of maybe some resources they could go read or even practically speaking working with the tool itself how can they think about getting started definitely uh, so a couple of the small resources, there's some great text search and text mining books, um, as well as small resources, just to understand what text search and text analytics is as a, at a high level. Uh, in terms of specifics, just going to the Greenplum site and searching for the GP text documentation, you can learn easily how to install GP text on your Greenplum uh, platform and use it pretty much from the get-go. Uh, we do provide a couple tutorials and scripts uh, to allow you to get familiar with the platform how to install it, how to manage it, uh, but it's very, very similar. If you've used Greenplum before, then it's pretty much the same interface. Right. And I'd also point out that the Greenplum database YouTube channel has a number of instructional videos from our own experts on how to work with things like GP Text and other uh, handlers that are provided by uh, Greenplum. Okay, great. So for those of you watching, you can check out those resources. Uh, guys, thanks so much for joining me today. It's been a great conversation. I, I would even say it's been the bee's knees. So thank you very much for joining me. And I hope everybody watching has enjoyed it.